Through the lenses of poetry and music, a diverse audience filled the Brick House Stoop to explore the historic role of Armenian women in the arts over the past 170 years, both in Armenia and its diaspora. The multimedia event was part of the Brick Stoop series and began with welcoming remarks by the associate producer of Brick's interdisciplinary programs, Vanity G. AGBU Performing Arts Director Haik Arsenyan also addressed the audience, explaining the purpose of the event that was titled Zorutsun, The Power of Women in Armenian Art. 2018 marks the 100th anniversary of Armenia's first independence, uh, first government, and in that government not only uh, women were uh, allowed to vote, but 8% of the uh, government were uh, women. So that's 100 years ago. And arguably, one of the first female ambassadors was also Armenian, uh, the ambassador of Armenia to Japan, uh, Diana Abkar. And she will be in this program so to speak. Um, but so this beautiful fact uh, also inspired us uh, for the collaboration for tonight's uh, event and uh, what better partner to collaborate with than Brick uh, that we have already uh, worked with. Uh, a couple of years ago we uh, presented world uh, renowned jazz pianist, Armenian jazz pianist Tigran uh, Hamasyan here with his project um, uh, Lucy Rousseau. So we are really happy uh, to be back. Thank you very much uh, for hosting us. Humanitarian and UN coordinator Huri Gudelekian kicked off the evening, which featured live performances by the Zulal a cappella trio and poetry readings by Lola Kundakjan. Recently, when I changed careers, I became a human rights activist. And what I've learned from human rights, actually, is that without artists, without song, without theater, we really cannot achieve whatever we want, even in the human rights or in, the, you know, in this world, whatever we want to achieve. The Zulal Trio and Lola Kundakjan went back and forth, tangling the audience with music and poetry, taking them on a journey of the history of the powerful Armenian women of the past, present, and future. Kundakjan recited texts by Armenian writer and diplomat Diana Apkar, who was the first woman to hold position of ambassador when she was appointed the honorary consul of the First Republic of Armenia to Japan a century ago. Tracing a history of Armenia, Lola Kundakjan also read works by Zabel Yesayan, Silva Kaputikyan, and Marus Yeramyan, both in Armenian and English translation. Amongst the three women we are choosing to honor tonight are incredibly talented individuals from the diaspora, from the Far East, and from Armenia itself. Silva Gabudikian is the only one who was born during the First Republic, lived throughout the Soviet era and the New Republic, and only died in 2006. She was in print for 60 years. She was one of the many women, but the most well-known in her in her home country. So we are very happy to introduce her tonight to audiences who may not know her work. Zabel Yesayan, who was born 150 years ago, is probably our earliest published uh, author. She was a teenager at, when Arshak Chobanyan uh, published uh, her first poem in the inaugural issue of Zarik, or Flower. And uh, she later on moved to France, studied at the Sorbonne, uh, an advanced uh, uh, lecturer in uh, literature, returned to Istanbul where she was picked up to, to, for the death marches on April 24. Luckily, she survived. There was another woman who didn't make it from the list of intellectuals. And the last one we are honoring is a woman who is not well known in the Armenian circles, and that's Diana Apgar. She was born in Rangoon, a descendant of Iranian Armenians, 
and she died in Yokohama, Japan, uh, just before World War II. And she was ambassador to uh, Japan, probably the first woman to ever have a diplomatic um, posting um, in the world. So uh, she wrote both in Armenian and English. And uh, even though she never went to Armenia, even after the end of the Republic, her love for her country, uh, her education, her faith, uh, definitely kept her very close to her Armenian heritage. Between each reading, the Zulal Trio performed pieces perfectly fitted to each of the poetry selections, giving the presentation a wonderful arch. <laughs> of this pain, this burning, consuming diabetes. I'm tired now. Who has filled this in me, this ancient blood, who in his long travel has degenerated and gotten heavier, which my veins burdened with their mute weight scream endlessly. Save me from my own blood. This heavy blood is harder to bear than backwaters. Who cursed me so I'd be born right here, across from this self-centered Masis, so that my soul endlessly palpitates around its circumference, so to, re so to return to it, always return. I am tired of staying stuck to its frozen mountains. Let me go. I am not Artavast. <laughs> died in 1943. A talented writer and activist, Zabelia Sayan was the only woman in the 1915 list of artists and writers who the Ottoman Turkish authorities ordered arrested, but who survived. There was another woman who didn't make it. Zabel was a novelist, translator, and professor of literature. She moved to Paris in the late 19th century to study at the Sorbonne. This poem, written by Zabel at the age of 17, was her first published work. It appeared in the first volume of editor Arshak Chobanyan's literary journal, Zarik, or Flower, published in Constantinople, now Istanbul, in 1895. I will start with the Ode to the Night, translated by Jennifer Manukyan, and proceed with the Armenian later on. Come, O night, come, Cover the world with your black skirts. Subdue the last breath of twilight with your coolness. Cover the world in your funereal darkness. The day enters your somber breast in its tomb, dragging along with it all the feelings and concerns sprouting within. Loving hearts anxiously wait for you to smother their reveries in your darkness. Come. Close their weary eyes with your invisible fingers. 
Take them to the depths of slumber for a few hours. Resting on your black arms, take them far from their daily routine that has exhausted them. In your coolness, lull them to sleep with your sweet music. Let their worries melt away for a few hours in your solemn realm. Your arrival brings with its precious memories. You are a friend to the lonely. It is you who sees their most private tears. The sleepless, miserable individuals who pass by open windows take in your cool darkness. Their thoughts and feelings wander around in your breast. And you take them all, burying them in your consoling obscurity. A visionary man, he was a refugee in France during the late 19th century and early 20th century, and he held a two-part conference in 1917 entitled The Armenian Woman, which was published, uh, the conference proceedings, that is to say, a year later, and which included the poems, not only of Zabel Yasayan, but other women, including Sopuri Vahanyan and Shoshani Kurinyan. So I think a round of applause to a visionary man. In closing, I would like to read a short poem by a contemporary Syrian-Armenian woman, Malushi Ramyan, which is entitled Feast, and which represents hope for our present and our future. Feast. You lift me from my depths like a shell plucked by the sound of waves. You wash my blood of its cells and hold it against the light to enjoy the sun's beauty. On the eve of the feast, I rise up to you through the grasp of pain and in my translucent blood, carrying you on that painful day, I am reborn. The event concluded with a panel discussion moderated by Huri Yudelekyan, while a backdrop of stunning imagery of Armenian figures and landscapes set the tone throughout the evening. I think it is very important as a human rights activist. I was so pleased to be part of this artist highlighting event where we are hearing women's voices, both in music and poetry. It's really important that we listen and we highlight voices of art through the human rights platform um, and vice versa. So, I mean, as human rights activists, we bring a lot of art into our platform, but it's really important also in the art world that we can speak about human rights through the arts. Luckily, I think there is no question that empowering women and girls it is empowering the family, the community, and the world that we live in. So there is no question anymore about why we need to empower women and girls. It is, it is imperative. And it's really important that we don't roll back these rights. And I would hope to see that all organizations like AGBU keep highlighting what it is important, which is women's and girls' rights. So thank you for doing what you're doing. Within Zulal, you know, the theme of, of women, women's voices, women's voices within the folk songs and themes is sort of like at the very heart of, of what we do. So it seemed like an absolute natural fit. Tell us a little bit about what we can expect from you. I know you have something exciting coming on with the Met, which AGB is really excited to co-sponsor too. So here's yet another collaboration. Met Project is a show that um, the Met commissioned um, of artist Kevork Murad who's put together a bunch of musicians to create the show on November 2nd. And the music will be composed by Vace Sharafian with Dudu Claire, Gevork, Dabarian, and us. And the piece is called The Sound of Stone. Uh, we're actually leaving tomorrow night to go to Beirut. Uh, so we'll be in performing in Lebanon. We have uh, two performances there. 
Uh, so that'll be coming up right now. And uh, we just came off of a series uh, this past year of doing educational programs for children throughout New York City, both with Carnegie Hall Musical Explorers Program and with the 92nd Street Y. So we taught uh, children uh, in New York that were learning with from many different artists, and we were included in their curriculum for their musical educational learning uh, for this past year. Musical Explorers. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience during that initiative with the Wheel Institute? Musical Explorers is, it was a fantastic program and we felt really lucky and happy to be a part of it. It felt fundamentally moving to be singing for a sea of children from all different backgrounds and all different neighborhoods in uh, the New York City region who were singing our songs with us and were connecting to this music. It was absolutely transformative. And then to be able to share and sort of compare music across um, calypso and hip hop and Armenian folk was really a wonderful way to bring Armenian folk music into a global landscape. So we were very proud and very thankful. We are online at zulal.org, Z-U-L-A-L.org. Our music is available on all of the major platforms. We're on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And so we're, we have a presence online. You can find us anywhere. As with this event on the power of women in Armenian art, the AGBU Performing Arts Department was proud to have collaborated with Carnegie Hall's Wild Music Institute to have Armenia represented for the first time in its Musical Explorers program. AGBU continues its impressive and important work of promoting the arts and is sponsoring the performing arts and education programs that will be part of the upcoming Armenia exhibition at the famous Metropolitan Museum of Art, which will open in New York on September 21st for Armenia's Independence Day. <laughs> Good night.